All right, so it's Sunday morning, uh, August 14th, and we're back from the Shaw Classic. So I, this video is just my quick reaction, like update to the community, like what happened while we were there, what are our thoughts, you know. So for those that aren't aware, we, uh, 4.0 Solutions and Intellic Integration were uh, title sponsors for the <clears throat> Hummer Tire Deadlift at the Shaw Classic in Loveland, Colorado. So it's a strongman competition. The The event that we were sponsoring was um, the Hummer Tire Deadlift. Um, <clears throat> by now, you've probably seen that uh, really as an afterthought, just sort of as an exercise, we developed a vision system to analyze the performance of uh, weightlifters <clears throat> on the deadlift, the bench press, and the squat, and all their variants, um, measuring force, hand placement, ergonomics, um, velocity, and then using machine learning algorithms to predict success, predict max weight at that movement, and predict injury. Okay, as the uh, as a title sponsor at the Shaw, at the as a sponsor at the Shaw Classic for the deadlift, I mean this is a legit competition. You know, thousands of people in attendance at the Budweiser Event Center. Um, you know, br huge thanks to Brian and Carrie Shaw <clears throat> when we had reached out to them about sponsoring. Uh, we really didn't, <clears throat> in terms of um, like what the marketing and all that stuff would be. It really was an afterthought. We didn't really, other than giving that them giving us provision to set up our cameras in front of the athletes during the competition um we really didn't ask for anything <laughs> we didn't ask for uh there wasn't i you know we didn't ask for any specific treatment or you know hey we wanted our logos here or there they they really carry and brian handled all that so uh, you know, it was great to see 4.0 Solutions and Intellic Integration on the banners, which were on the, like, the outside of the event center. And then <clears throat> all the athletes, when they were doing the deadlift, they were wearing shirts that had their names on the back with 4.0 Solutions on the back logo. So right up until nearly 1 o'clock on Saturday when the event started, we you know, I was still developing on the unit. Um, I had been doing a bunch of benchmarking tests. Could I... Could I let the unit run for, you know, what was basically two hours during the competition? Like, would, would it overheat? I mean, there was all these weird considerations. And so I quickly, um, Friday night and Saturday morning, I wrote a, a quick UI program on a Jupyter notebook that would allow me to monitor the status of the unit remotely over a Wi-Fi connection. So during, I, I had VIP seating, which was right... <clears throat> basically a very front row on the floor right next to where the athletes were. <clears throat> and I was on my MacBook the whole time. So if, if you watch any of the footage, there's tons of social media footage out there because a world record was broken. If you see any of that footage, you're going to see me with a laptop in my lap monitoring the athletes. So um, we, we documented the whole thing. We had a documentary team come with us. We will have a 25 probably maybe I know there's something like <clears throat> five hours or no wait 25 hours of 4k footage is what the documentary team got um we, you know we we worked out at various gyms I mean you know they basically documented the whole trip from Tuesday and all the way through the end of Sunday I'm not it's Sunday right now I am not in Denver me and my son we flew back from out of Denver last night the rest of the team is still there uh I needed to get back. I had been there most of the week. Um, and I, I've already shot some like reaction footage afterwards uh, with the documentary team, but I wanted to post this to our YouTube channel. And, you know, I'm sure everybody wants to know, hey, how did it went? Well, it went better than we could possibly have ever imagined. Um, so we predicted the world record was going to happen, and we predicted it on the second lift. So I think there were about five rounds of lifting. They did 900 pounds. I, I'll, I, if I remember the progressions correctly, I think they started with 900 pounds, then they went to 950, 1,000. <clears> I'll have to look. I think they, they, they started at 900. I think everybody skipped 950 and they went to 1,000. Then 
everybody but one person skipped a thousand. Then they went to um, ten fifty or eleven hundred. We predicted the world record was was gonna was could potentially happen. There was actually more than one person who we that our our algorithms predicted could break the world record. There are actually three that we predicted could break the world record. Um, by the third lift, that had narrowed to two. So basically what was happening was um, on each lift, uh, <clears throat> the unit was processing that lift when they were done, and it was telling us uh, force, uh, uh, ergon um, ergonomic placement, hand placement. Uh, it was time to lock out. Um, uh, there were maybe like 11 parameters that were being reported. But one of the things that was being re reported to us was a prediction on uh, what, based on that lift, based on the data from that lift, ba based on the known weight, what is, what could that athlete, um, max out at today? And with Alexei Novikov, who broke the world record at 1,210 pounds, we predicted he was going to break the world record more than two lifts before that. Um, and when he did his 1,150 pound lift, we, the, we predicted he would be able to do 1,272 pounds. And then when he did the actual world record lift at 1,210, we predicted 1,265. Um, I can tell you this, that at the, everyone who was in the VIP section with us in the, in the section triple D, wherever we were, uh, they all knew because I, my, me and my team were split apart and I was like sort of yelling down to them what the results were. So there was me and my son I'm in, the, in this one at the very end of the row, and then the rest of my team was one row back, maybe 15 feet away, and I was having to yell the results down to them. So basically everyone knew in the section that we had predicted the world record was going to be broken. And in fact, when Alexi came up to break the world record, we said he, not only is he going to break this world record, he's going to do it with ease. And he did. He just pulled it like so smooth, man, locked it out. And everybody in the section was so stoked because we had predicted – many lifts before that, that it, it was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know, from here, we don't know <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, I don't really know to where to go from here. I have, I'm going to meet with my team tomorrow. We're going to kind of go through it. You know, this is obviously a vision system for the fitness industry is not my top priority in my businesses, but it's, it's obviously viable technology. We proved it could work. Um, Everyone who was watching the live stream, because a world record was broken, everyone who was watching the live stream, everyone who's watching this, they're seeing our logo everywhere. Uh, we had a chance to interview many of the athletes. The athletes knew this system was running. Um, and we found out after the fact that they, their fear was that we were going to tell them they were going to fail a lift before they attempted it, that they were going to be notified of it. We, the, the, the athletes didn't see the data at all. It was only me on a laptop, so on my MacBook watching it, and then, you know, Jared, who was sitting next to me, was watching me analyze it, and then the film crew was seeing me do it, and some of the people around us was seeing it, but that's it. <clears throat> it wasn't being projected anywhere. But where I see the future of this is, is sort of the combination of you know ESPN Sports Science at a at strength competitions, um, and it's going to help athletes decide which weights to attempt, which ones to skip. Uh, the you know where, where their form is starting to degrade and where injury could happen. So, um, so there's tons and tons and tons of potential with the technology. But the the big win is we collected great data. We predicted a world record and it happened. Um, the athletes are all stoked about the technology. We had a chance to interview. So Jared um, <clears throat> interviewed Luke Stoltman, Terry Hollins, uh, Nick Best. Um, I can't remember who else <laughs> we interviewed, Brian Shaw, obviously. Um, and it, all of them are excited for the technology. So it was a huge win. Um, still sort of flying high in that we predicted a world record. We sort of let everybody know it was going to happen. We literally let everybody in our section know, hey, he's going to break the world record today. Um, barring any injury or whatever. But And not only is he going to do it, I mean, literally it was... Not only is he going to do it, he's going to break it easy. Moreover, there was somebody who was lifting. So there was a, 
uh, Constantine Lanish, I think his name is, he's from Georgia. He, that in the first two lifts, when he did his 900 pound lift, and I think it was the thousand pound lift, um, hit the amount of force he had off the floor was more than 40% greater than every other athlete. Um, the next closest athlete in the group. And one of the things that we learned, and I, I want to look at the data more, was that Constantine left a lot in the tank. He did too many lifts. Either he warmed up too much or whatever, but he had he had the force and potential um, on the 900 and 1,000 pound lifts that could have gotten, we were predicting him, I think his, his was at 12, I'll have to go back and look, but he was, he was over, he was over 1200 pounds. We were predicting, and it was over the world record that he had, he was generating enough force and velocity, um, to break the world record. Um, and yet he didn't even get close. I don't think he even did 11, 1150, but he, but the, the force measurements were correct. So what it means is if you look at the, it, the way that he, um, on his last lift, he had declined so greatly. Like he had lost, uh, he gassed out and we were able to measure it using vision. It was just awesome. I mean, it was just really, really awesome to see. Um, so I'm, I'm super grateful uh, for Brian Shaw and Carrie for everything they did, you know, with our sponsorship. Um, the athletes were amazing. Uh, you know, I, I can't wait for you guys to see the, the documentary that comes out. Um, I think it's going to be take about a month to produce the whole thing with all the footage and everything, but you'll get to see the whole process, how much we were working on the unit right up till the last minute. And even some of the problems we ran into, when we were doing setup, uh, with radio frequency interference and that kind of stuff at the, at the stadium. But, uh, anyway, I wanted to give you guys the update, let you know exactly how it went, um, and give you my initial thoughts. <clears throat> um, far exceeded what I'd hoped uh, we would achieve. Um, and I'm just super stoked that, that, uh, that all the work that we put into developing this was, you know, it paid off. So thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next one.